Now, on this channel, I've covered a lot of really disturbing and crazy cases, but this one is by far the most messed up case. Picture this. A father marries his own biological daughter, impregnates her, then kills her. Sounds crazy, right? But it did happen. This is the twisted case of the incest dad who went on a killing spree after being taken from his lover slash daughter. In 1995, 15-year-old Alyssa Garcia was living in San Antonio with her family when she met 20-year-old Steven Padel on the internet. They started exchanging messages and love letters, and soon, Steven traveled from his home in New York to Texas to start a relationship with the underage girl. Alyssa's parents did not approve of this relationship, but did nothing to stop it. And so it continued, and a year later, Alyssa got pregnant. She gave birth to a baby girl in January 1998 and named her Denise. But the joy of being a first-time mom was only short-lived because she soon found out that her soon-to-be husband was actually abusing their infant daughter. According to Alyssa, Steve would brutally pinch the baby so hard that she would be left with bruises all over her tiny body. And as if that's not bad enough, the sadistic monster would also stuff the baby up in a cooler to try and drown her crying and prevent Alyssa from freeing her until she was almost out of air. Being only 17, Alyssa was totally scared of Steven and knew that the only way that her daughter would be safe was if she was as far away from her biological father as possible. So she decided to give the baby to a loving family, hoping that she would be well taken care of. It didn't take much convincing for Steven to get on board with the idea. And so at eight months old, the little girl was adopted by a kind couple called Kelly and Anthony Fusco, who renamed her Katie and raised her along with their biological daughter in New York. Katie grew up to become a talented artist who is known for drawing comic strips. After high school, she had plans of going to college and pursuing a career in advertising. She even had an online portfolio where she shared her passion for drawing, saying, A pen and something to draw on became a safe place for me. Ink became my weapon against rules and regulations. There wouldn't be a corner in a classroom or park that didn't have a secret little character living on it. Ask an artist why creating is important to them, and they won't stop giving out reasons. To be short, for me, a life without art is no life at all. As for Alyssa, she continued living with Steven, despite everything he had done, and even married him in 2006 and had two more daughters. She would later reveal in an interview that the reason she continued living with him was that he had threatened to record himself ending his own life and then send the video to her. Things in their marriage continued to go from bad to worse, as Steven stayed at home jobless while Alyssa had to work several jobs just to keep them afloat. Steven's temper also contributed to the problem, as he would break things around the house and start punching through the walls. Alyssa also said she suffered emotional and verbal abuse from Steven for years. I was always walking on eggshells whatever his mood was, everybody knew. And that mood was often not too happy, a lot of yelling, and a lot of things smashed in the house in front of our kids. Although Steven did not treat his two daughters the same way he had treated Katie, he was still very violent and temperamental and would angrily berate them over the slightest thing. In January 2016, Katie, who is now 18 and knew she had been adopted, started searching for her biological parents online. She managed to find them on Facebook and messaged them. Both Steven and Alyssa were happy to reunite with their firstborn daughter, and so they arranged to meet. The meeting went so well that instead of going to college that year as she had planned, Katie decided to move to Virginia and live with her birth parents and sisters. But that was a huge mistake. The moment Steven met Katie, he became a completely different person. And not in an innocent way of a father trying to appear more presentable to his long lost daughter, but in a more twisted way of a man trying to appear attractive to a woman that happens to be his daughter. He started dressing up in skinny jeans and form-fitting shirts, shaved his beard to appear younger than he was, and even started letting his hair grow. 
Alyssa also noticed that Stephen would spend a lot of time with his teenage daughter and was even sleeping on her bedroom floor. When Alyssa confronted him about it, Stephen became aggressive and told her that it was none of her business. Alyssa tried to warn Katie about Stephen, telling her that he had abused her as a child and that's why she was put up for adoption. But Stephen seemed to have already brainwashed Katie because even after learning the truth about him, she continued getting close to him. In November 2016, Alyssa had had enough and decided to move out with her two younger daughters, while Katie chose to stay behind with her father. Alyssa said in an interview that she suspected that Stephen was slowly turning their daughter against her, but never imagined what was really going on. This, however, changed in March 2017, when Stephen asked to speak with Alyssa about their 11-year-old daughter, who he said was acting up whenever she visited him. He brought with him a journal belonging to their daughter for Alyssa to read. And through the journal, Alyssa discovered the horrifying truth of what was going on behind her back. In the journal, the troubled girl had drawn images of Katie pregnant and wrote, my dad calls her baby also his baby. My dad even says she's my stepmom, WTF. He doesn't even want me to say or call her sister anymore. Katie is my sister. She's probably his wife now, but in nature, she's only my sister. Does she see me as a daughter or a sister? In another disturbing entry, the girl referred to her father as the devil, saying, he's Satan, he's effing Satan. He'll go to hell, but he won't be the one getting tortured. He'll be the one torturing people. She went on to draw pictures of her dad as the devil and wondered whether Katie's child would be born half demon. When Alyssa read the journal, she became hysterical and confronted Stephen about it, asking him if it was true that Katie was pregnant with his baby. And Stephen allegedly answered, I thought you knew. We're in love. At this point, Alyssa started screaming and called the cops on him and got a protective order for her younger daughters, with whom she and Stephen shared custody. But when the police came, they only interviewed the children and Stephen, and no arrests were made. In July 2017, two months after Alyssa and Stephen's divorce was finalized, the father and daughter got illegally married in Parkton, Maryland, in a private lake ceremony. They lied about being related so that they could be allowed to get married. But the most disturbing part about this was that there were some guests at the wedding, including Katie's adoptive parents and Stephen's mother, who even posed for a picture as if it was the most normal thing in the world for a father to marry his daughter. The adoptive parents reportedly felt that there was nothing they could do but support Katie. Katie and her father moved to a house in Nightdale, North Carolina, where they lived like a normal couple and even had their son, Bennett. But their wedded bliss was only short-lived, as they were both arrested in January 2018 and charged with incest, adultery, and contribution to delinquency. If found guilty, the pair would have gotten up to 10 years in jail. Stephen's lawyer actually tried to defend Stephen's actions, saying, this case is about an 18-year-old girl who shows up at the doorstep of a 40-year-old man who's going through difficult times with his wife. They had a bond because they're biologically related, but they never knew each other before they had a relationship. He was head over heels with her, so much so that that outweighed the issue of them being biologically related. Both Stephen and Katie were released on bond and ordered not to contact each other. Their son, Bennett, was put in the custody of Stephen's 72-year-old mother, but things would not end there. After she was released, Katie moved back in with her adoptive parents and tried to move on with her life. But then in April that year, she broke the no contact order when she called Stephen to officially end their relationship. Stephen did not take that lightly. On April 11th, Stephen went to his mother's house and picked up his seven month old son. He then took the baby to his place where he suffocated him to death and left his lifeless body stuffed in his closet. He then took his minivan and drove 600 miles to New Milford, Connecticut, where Katie lived with her adoptive parents. He arrived at the house on the morning of April 12th and waited outside for Katie to come out. He knew that Katie was visiting her adoptive grandmother in Waterbury, Connecticut that day. As he watched, Katie and her adopted father, Anthony, came out of the house and pulled out of their driveway in their pickup truck. 
Stephen followed them closely behind, waiting for the perfect opportunity to act. When Anthony and Katie stopped at a red light, Stephen pulled up beside them, took out his assault rifle, and opened fire. Katie and Anthony did not even have the chance to react. They died instantly of multiple gunshot wounds. Stephen would later be found dead in his car with a self-inflicted gunshot wound to his head. But before he ended his life, Stephen had called his mother and told her what he had done. In this harrowing 911 call, you can hear the mother crying as she tells the dispatcher what her son had told her. Uh, my son just called me and uh, he told me he, oh my God. You know, Carolina, uh, he his baby and he's in the house. Okay, you said that he told you he his baby. Oh my, oh my okay, ma'am, listen to me. What's your name? Oh okay, tell me exactly what happened. Uh, he, he's, I, uh, he's, he's not home. His wife broke up with him over the phone yesterday. And he told me, she's in New York, and he told me he was on his way. He called me last night and said he's on his way. He's going to bring the baby to her. And then he was coming back. And he just, <laughs> he just, <laughs> Okay. He, he said he doesn't have he his wife, he his father, and he, I can't even believe this is happening. Okay. Police are investigating an apparent murder-suicide spree involving a North Carolina man, his birth daughter slash lover, their infant son, and the daughter's adoptive father. The crime covered three states, ending in New York. Officers were called for a welfare check at a North Carolina home where 45-year-old Stephen Plattel and his 20-year-old daughter, Katie, lived in an alleged romantic relationship. Inside the home, they found seven-month-old Bennett Plattel dead. No one else was there. Earlier in the morning and 600 miles north in New Milford, Connecticut, officers found Katie and her adoptive father, 56-year-old Anthony Fusco, dead inside of a pickup. Both ruled homicides. Around the same time, New York state troopers across the state line in Dover found a minivan with Stephen Plattel dead inside from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. Alyssa was devastated to learn of her daughter's and grandson's demise. Through an interview with the Daily Mail, she said that she was somewhat relieved that Stephen was gone since she no longer would have to look over her shoulder. What do you think about this case? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe for more.